Good evening, everyone. My name is Michelle Cook. I'm owner of Operation Be Fit, a holistic and wellness company. I'm also, I'm also founder of Roxbury Rides. And what we do is we encourage people of color in the communities of Roxbury, Dorchester, and Mattapan to go out and bike. And I am from Roxbury. I'm a resident of Roxbury. I live in Dorchester currently. That's hard to do all three. So I'm Tamika Francis. Um, I don't bike. There are no pictures of me biking. As my mom, my dad, and my two-year-old sister, it's my first memory of biking. You see, my dad was taking my sister on his bike, and she hurt her foot in the spoke. She's fine. Don't worry. But until 10 years ago, I really thought of the intersectionality of biking, race, income, and neighborhoods. Now I think about it every single day. So our presentation next. So this is our only very public health slide. It's our only slide that will really speak to community context. We know it very well. When you overlay a map of Boston, a chronic disease and also residents by race, we know this. White residents are less sick. Higher income residents are less sick. We also know neighborhoods with infrastructure and also environment and also access to policymakers tend to do better. We know the reasons, all the isms, all the schisms, historical factors, human constructs, we're also flawed. But let's move on to more positive things, right? So what keeps me up at night these days and gets me really excited is this amazing project, Let's Get Healthy Boston. It's a three-year project of deep and meaningful relationships with the Boston Public Health Commission, the Boston Alliance of Community Health, and 75 residents across Boston who are here today, healthy community champions. We also work with several residents from East Boston to Mattapan, from the grassroots to the grass tops, working between government and also various sectors. So the focus of our talk today is active transit, right? Because it's street talk. And our long-term goal is really to reduce chronic disease caused by inactivity, poverty, and racism. The project's goal is more so to offer more options for safer biking and walking for residents, and this time, all residents. So our first line of work back, is working with Safe Rosa School, increasing, <laughs> we haven't really practiced this, right? So Safe Rosa School is making sure that Boston Public School residents, um, students have better access to walking and biking opportunities. But the big and juicy portion is working on bike equity in the neighborhoods within Boston. And that's the alphabet soup of all our partners, just to make sure. Now community engagement, now that's my baby. That's what I spend most of my time doing. This work takes up about a third of the project's budget, real investment. We have a laundry list of all the impact that we've had over the last two and a half years, from awareness to education, voluntary policy changes. But here's a really concrete example of what we've worked on. How many folks know that there's a $5 subsidized annual Hub Day membership? Hubway? Great, thanks. How many folks know where you can sign up for this membership? Not Anne or Mary. <laughs> so up until, between 2011 and 2015, there were two ways, in person or on the phone at City, at City Hall. N a barrier, right? As of September 2016, in partnership with the Champions and Boston Bikes, our amazing partner, there were five satellite sites across Boston, in Dorchester, South Boston, and East Boston, and more in the pipeline for Roxbury and Alston. So while you're going for your child at Child Care at Alston Brighton, for example, you can also do membership for Hubway. So that's really making the healthy choice easier and acceptable for all. And that's me up there with the mayor, y'all. <laughs> So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, our campaign, our public awareness campaign. So this is um, from I Bike Boston. So many of the spokes models here, well, actually all of our spokes models here, are residents of Boston. So there's Farrah and Vivian and um, Jeff, uh, Jeremy, excuse me. And I'm also there as well. If you guys go to South Station, I'm still there. So take a picture. <laughs> I'm there. Um, I'm also at the Roxbury. Um, Boys and Girls Club, YMCA as well. So if you see me, just take a picture. <laughs> some of our collaborations that we did was um, some of our I Bike to Work series. So we did that from, Aug from August until October. So we started at Franklin Park. We got a group of our residents in Ro from Roxbury, Dorchester, and Mattapan, and we rode our bikes to downtown Boston. I actually thought of this idea because I was a little selfish and I wanted to ride with groups because I was a little nervous of riding down um, Blue Hill Ave 
Washington Street by myself. So there's a group of my folks there. And we also did Roxbury Rides, which is a historical bike ride through Roxbury and Dorchester. And we give some historical information um, about our city. So we work through community engagement, collaborations, and communications. No capacity building. So making sure leadership and capacity is built within our neighborhoods. A few weeks ago, the Globe Carrier article was quite interesting. I spoke to this um, idea of um, outsourcing teaching your kid to ride. Cost between $20 to $80 or so. But we also know that this article missed the income, the neighborhood, and the isms and schisms around what barriers might actually exist for communities to teach kids to ride. We know that in some neighborhoods, um, folks are affected by barriers such as work, limited English proficiency, not having time, being seen as invisible, or multiple job parents don't have this time. So we are working on leadership within our neighborhoods, and we're really proud to have supported three women of color in Boston to become licensed cycling instructors. That's a big deal. These women... These women are neighborhood-based, have language skills, and can support our neighborhoods with both instruction, advocacy support, and also just encouragement with their, around confidence. Michelle was the first woman to have test, did a test run of this training, went all the way to St. Paul, Minneapolis, and came back with a gold prize. Since then, Farah Wong and Vivian Ortiz, who was here last year, have been able to do so. Vivian will be able to do Learn to Ride clinics in both languages. Now, Boston Bikes is an amazing program. They've been doing this for several years. However, we do need more capacity in the neighborhoods. So, we're working through change in the context, and there are several um, ways to do so. But imagine this for me for a second. That's Kim off our champions. She recently learned to ride, and that's her granddaughter. Can you imagine? She's around the same age as my sister when she had her bike accident. What if Kim's grandchildren, and ours for that, ex for that matter, inherited a Boston where biking was a norm for all residents, regardless of race, income, neighborhood, and neighborhoods like Kim's in Mattapan had infrastructure, systems, and co-designed policies that suited all residents and ensured that active transit was the norm. Can you imagine that? Thank you so much. We're gonna play. Seven minutes? <laughs>